Good morning. It's Dave with another Dave Campbell Shorts presentation. And I realized that if I just moved my camera just a bit to the left, you could see a little bit more beautiful presentation than just the page and my foot, like I usually give you. <coughs> Sorry, but there's my foot <clears throat> since I coughed and wrecked my <coughs> presentation. I may as well throw my foot in there. But did you know without the foot, we don't get to go anywhere? <clears throat> foot is about the understanding <coughs> and understanding this word is absolutely the ability to survive to regenerate so I wanted to say real quickly I say real quickly <coughs> never to get there but um, that the Psalms is interestingly related to many many things about our law and I just want to say that a king like David is a lawgiver as an example to every person on the planet. You know, the Jews are often excited that they're the elite chosen of God, but that all goes to crap when Jesus comes into the scene and basically makes us all adopted Jews. So I think the Jews are understanding of that and like to hang on to the power of the Old Testament as long as they possibly can. <laughs> Just a theory. If you uh, look at the number of actual Jewish people that are in charge of things in this world, you can get angry or you can get excited and say, hey, wait a minute, they are setting a standard here because why? They are in touch with the law of Moses and the iterations of law and they study and they use words very effectively. And so that's why I, I've been putting light on anagrams of wordplay and alphanumerics I mean just this morning reading the Psalms I I uh, <clears throat> I found evidence that in this in this book just in the first chapter or two of Psalms you're directed to know your nine essential amino acids for good for goodness sakes now how do you know that Dave well you, you you got that cell phone right go to word plays anagrams uh, type that into Google and you'll come to a, a website where you can type in up to 14 letters of any phrase and it will give you a tremendous amount of information about how the words can be uh, reveal deeper meaning uh, and point to things that are most definitely connected to the main text, but also it's like a diamond. You get to see a lot more. So this, let's just read a little bit of this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that bringeth forth, forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. 
Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right. <clears throat> so people could would say, well, you turned me off already. They're, they're, they're forming an elite little group here. Yeah, but what they're really doing is by writing this passage is teaching you that there are both godly and ungodly. Okay. Well, what does that mean, Dave? Well, if if you really look at it, you'll you'll come to the conclusion that all of us are both godly and ungodly. Now, how is that, Dave? Here. <laughs> Good morning. Um, it's it's like this. When a precedent is set. For, hey Jimmy, the stove is hot. Don't touch it. All right, that's literally when you can put that phrase in writing. You're a lawgiver, and all the thousands of little Jimmys in your neighborhood. If you post that up on all the telephone poles, they have an option at that point. Don't touch the stove. It's hot. Don't touch it. It's, it'll burn you. That's the that's the basic idea behind writing. Writing is a ability of a sentient beast, a human being. Okay. So the the great thing about this is that although writing separates us from the haves and the have-nots. In this book, it's talking about, in this context of, of law and the regeneration of law and the, the ability to get hold of right and wrong, it's basically, yes, separating groups of people from sinners and godly, right? But the beautiful thing is that if you really look to what the book is saying in the final, its final end, it's giving you a great warning of if you ignore little Jimmy, the sign that says, don't put your hand on the stove, you're going to get your finger burned. Um, so Jimmy can either go, well, I hate those lawgivers. Jimmy could tear down all the signs, right? He could, he could, he could, he could take the uh, the lawgivers and put them in an oven and burn them if he was strong enough, right? We all know who did that. His name was Adolf, not Jimmy. Um, <laughs> what what the beautiful the beautiful thing about the the history and the example of the Jewish people is in this in our lifetime is you literally get to see. Uh, a tiny group of people who have such an amazing influence on the rest of us and that they even through crafting this book divinely inspired have said you guys are just like us and please don't harm us and we're just like you and so if you want to take it a step deeper, what you really get is we can call these people Jews or we can call ourselves now adopted Jews with the power to write laws to you know, warn people about what we see as either dangerous or effective, godly or ungodly, right? Um, and then you can... Um, take that a step further and say, well, that that's interestingly just knowledge, isn't it? Knowledge being transmitted to an, a sentient beast. So what the, what the interesting dynamic really is to me is in, in the end or in the last time, the final resolve of this book, it's a matter of awareness when the 
you know, little Jimmy, don't put your hand on the stove sign is heeded by everybody. Everybody realizes they can put a clause on that. And at that point, people, humanity, starts to value humans and each other as lawgivers. And when you look at what Jesus says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, if lambs is an anagram for blames, nobody gets this right. Everybody is getting is doing things right and wrong every day. And we've got to feed each other, not only to unfortunately uh, promote what is evil, <laughs> but also get the final um, understanding that we're also the ones that come up with the rules to, to save and nurture one another. So you can't have one without the other. The best that we can hope for is, you know, getting to a point where we can stop killing one another in human, as a human race. And that's going to come through teaching and knowledge. And uh, guys, that's what my, my programs are about. They're about lifting up human value. And uh, anybody who is promoting division, promoting uh, rage against another person, or groups of people because of what they're arguing about, uh, to the point of you know trying to incite riots, those those types of teaching um, and speech, it's clear the outcome of their speech is violence. So we don't need that. Uh, we need to get in this book. We need to start focusing as a human race about human nurture because there's enough natural phenomenon uh, that we don't know about yet. A e i.e. Uh, asteroids, uh, you know, the, the functions of the cosmos. Um, we need to start thinking about Gene Roddenberry a little more, about building a space station, about building a, a Starship Enterprise. You know, the Starship Enterprise is symbolic of a fair and just governance system that gets out, explores new and unseen things and cracks the codes and writes the books and <laughs> serves humanity. Uh, it's, it's, it's not simple, but it's that simple. All right, I hope you enjoyed this morning's presentation. I'm not calling you dumb, okay? We're all, we're all in levels of maturity. I'm, I'm gonna just tell you, I'm very immature. I'm like a little kid. In fact, Jesus said, "If you wanna, if you wanna be, follow him. You gotta be like a little kid." And then Paul turns around and says, "Well, you gotta, you gotta put away your childish things." Well, there you go. You gotta do both, um, and you gotta become a lawgiver. You gotta take out your pen, and you gotta, you gotta recognize that the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, is you. You look in the mirror. And you can answer this question. Ask yourself this question. What type of toothpaste does the Antichrist like? Then look on the counter, and if it's Colgate, you can say, well, he prefers Colgate. <laughs> Christ in you, okay, you got the power to do good. Antichrist in you, you got the power to do bad. Get over it. Let's go pastors, let's go academics, let's go people, let's start getting this right today, okay? I love you. <laughs>